20 years ago. And we're back, folks, and, and we're still here with Judy Baker. I always love it when I have Judy on because she's easy to talk to. She has a lot of things going on. So I want, her to, I want us to go back and revamp now. I know that we haven't had Christmas yet. I, no. I understand. But January the 10th, we're going to have old Christmas at the museum. So, Judy, just revamp this real quickly for us so we know what we're doing. It will be a traditional Appalachian celebration. We will, have, we will be breaking up Christmas. Yes. We'll have music. We'll have simple treats. We'll have storytelling, um, play games. It's just going to be a fun family evening. Bring the kids. Please bring the kids because they will have a ball. They will have a ball. They will learn something mm -hmm. about our traditions. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a program that they can take away that will have um, information in it right. um, that they can take with them. The only thing, we always give a little card that has a picture of mistletoe on it. And we still may do it. But on January the 5th, if you put mistletoe under your pillow, by midnight on January the 6th, you will see the face of your true love in your dreams. Oh, my goodness. So I don't know if the mistletoe thing will work out going on the 10th or not. We're on the wrong day. We're on the wrong day. Yeah. So. Uh, but um, a cool thing, and, and, and watch this. Between December the 25th and January the 6th, they're also called ruling days. Yes, they are. And I've tried for years and I always forget about December the 27th to write it down. That's right. What the weather is. But it's amazing because it does, my grandmother used to do it all the time. She would start on the 25th and if it was snowing on the 25th, uh -huh. then it would be snowing on the first, the January the 6th. Is that right? It and would be snowing in January. In January. It would be that so month. So that's your, that's your 12, you, each day rules a month. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and cloudy or rainy or sunshine or whatever. So if anybody wants to do that, start on the 25th and whatever that day is, write that down and then do the 26th, 27th. But it's like Judy says, about the 27th, I forget. <laughs> I forget to do it. And so, but it's it's real interesting. But those are called the ruling days. They are, they are. And those are the 12 days of Christmas also, folks. So we're breaking up Christmas. It's the 12 days of Christmas. It's the ruling days. So quit having those 12 days of Christmas sales before Christmas. <laughs> Because you're on my bad list when you do. Okay, so that is January the 10th uh -huh. at 6 o'clock at the, at the museum. museum. Museum members are free. Mm -hmm. Non-members are $5. Mm -hmm. All right, then on the 12th, you're going to do Appalachian Family Day starting at 10 o'clock. Give me a quick what we're doing on that. Well, January is going to be Appalachian Heritage Month right. at the Museum Center. Old Christmas will be the first event on two days later on the 12th. We're opening it up. We're going to have traditional games that the kids can play. We're going to have what I'm so excited about, an instrument petting zoo. Uh, my son okay. has a bowed saltry. He's oh, going to bring okay. his bowed saltry. He has a lap dulcimer. He's going to bring those. Okay. I'm working with some people trying to get some other traditional instruments in. So people, kids and adults, it's not going to matter, can touch them, maybe play a chord on them, see what they sound like, um, know what... They, you know, what came across the mountains. How neat. Uh, we're going to make butter. Okay, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I know. We're, we're going to try. We're You're going to try butter. to make butter. We're okay. going to try to make butter. Okay. Um, I've got another couple of ideas I'm running by them down there that we're going to try. I hope we can make leather bridges. Wow. Well, leather bridges are your, your string and green beans. Yeah. And I hope we can make but, some leather bridges. But you think... That that's going to happen. I mean, I hope so. If we can find green beans, I start, I'll start to say, <laughs> you got to find green beans in January. Maybe, maybe enough. Okay, enough. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to put enough away for all winter. Okay, enough that a kid can come and string, string a couple green and beans. know what it's like. Yeah. Okay. And uh, maybe some traditional crafts and you know the games and uh, material to take home with how we made the butter, information about how life was in early Appalachia. I think that's going to be really awesome. It's still in the planning stages. understand. And even today I shot an email down there and said, what if we did this? Oh, <laughs> you know, bless their hearts. Yes, and they're thinking, oh no, should we read this email? It's from Judy. She's going to ask us for more. So that's going to be the 12th, starting at 10 a.m. I'm going to assume it's going to run all day? Till 3, yeah. Till 3, okay, 10, I'm going to write that down right here, 10 till 3. Yeah, during the regular operating hours. Okay. And of course the exhibit will still be open. And the ship trying exhibit yes. will still yes. be there. Yes. 
and the museum store will be open. We'll be all over the place. So come, mm -hmm. bring the kids. Um, you'll learn a few things. You'll have a lot of fun. And then on the 24th, I love this because Judy and I were talking about this off air. I, I am a pseudo musician and I, and I love all things musical. So we're going to have a guild singing school mm -hmm. at the museum on the 24th. So Judy, share with us what that is. That will be Sacred Harp, Shape Note Singing. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know what it is, if your church still uses hymnals, and if they're the redback hymnals, which by the way were printed in Cleveland. Yes, they were. The notes look funny. They're they shape have notes. shapes. Mm -hmm. And when people came into Appalachia, the majority could not read. And if you brought music in, they could not read the music because they could not read the notes, they could not read the words. So you would have singing schools. And rather than trying to read notes like D, C, B, E, F, all of those, you had a shape. Well, each shape made a specific sound. And it was more the do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each note made a different sound and we would have singing schools. And rather than direct this way, uh -huh. you were directed this way, so you kind of knew whether you were going up or down up on or the down. scale. Okay. And then, you know, they would be keeping time, so everybody would be keeping time. The room would be set up in a four square, each um, tenors, basses, um, alto sopranos, I'm assuming that's the general thing, will be sitting together in you Learning be, our part. Learning our parts. Okay. All right. We'll probably have some simple treats because we'll probably have an intermission and we're going to hand out information about what Shape Note Singing is. It will be a lot of fun, something else to learn. And I think this is great. I, anytime I'm playing the piano for anybody and they hand me a hymnal with Shape Notes, whew, you have to, your mind has got to get, they're there, they're on the same line that the regular notes yeah. are on, but they're shaped funny. So you have, you have to do that. But I'm going to come that night if, you know, good Lord willing, the creek don't rise because I would love to hear how to do this. Right. We've um, got somebody that we think is going to be able to come to lead, and they'll be bringing some people with them that know how to do it. Good. And that good. will help a whole lot. It'll be just fun just to fellowship because that's how people used to do it. I know, and I, and I think that's great. And both of my granddaddies had... Uh, Quart singing quartets, and um, they sang out of those shape note books, mm -hmm. and and um, I've got a Stamp Baxter book at the house that wouldn't take anything in the world for, but I hate playing out of it because it's the shape notes, and uh, but um, but I just think it's going to be so much fun. It is. I just really do. So all right, so we've got we've got the tenth for Old Christmas, and then we've got the twelfth for Appalachian Family Day. Mm -hmm. Old Christmas is at six. Appalachian Family Day, that's a Saturday, so that we're going to start at 10, at 10, go to 3, and then we're going to have the singing school on the 24th at 6 at the Museum Center, and we'll have more to tell about that right. as soon as it kind of get finalized of what we're doing on that, but I just think this is so exciting because this is Appalachian Heritage Month at the museum, and it looks like that's what we're doing. We're doing. We're in the heart of Appalachia. We, I, you look over there toward Big Frog Mountain. That's right. And mm -hmm. just think about people coming here uh, from North Carolina and, and coming down from Upper East Tennessee from Virginia mm -hmm. like my people did. My people came through from North Carolina too, so yeah. It's, it's just, and so many people, we've got so many people that have moved here that enrich our community they by do. bringing their history with that them. That is true that we want to show them what a rich history we have here. Mm -hmm. And down at the museum, they just have all kinds of treasures down there. They do. They and do. I would encourage people to get on Facebook and follow the museum because every day or two, there's um, a curator's curiosity or oh. a, um, a <clears throat> bit of uh, history that nobody knows about. And it's just a little thing that's put on Facebook that it's a little fun fact or an artifact that they've brought out and said, here's the history of this artifact. Isn't that something? And it's museumcenter.org. Uh -huh. That's the website. So you can go on there, folks, and, and, and do that. So so uh, the fourth annual Old Christmas celebration. I think this will be our fifth. I think that may say fourth, but I was looking through my notebook. I'm going to change this and make it fifth. It will be the fifth. Okay. Um, because we started in 2015. Well, there you go. All right. So 
15, 15 16, 16, 17, 18, 18 19. 19. That's, you got That'd it. Right. Okay. So do you have a story to tell us today? I've got a real quick Christmas story A real to quick tell Christmas story. A real okay. quick Christmas All right. story. And this story starts like so many stories with... Once, once upon, upon a time. time. <laughs> once upon a time back in the stable where baby Jesus lay in his cold, cold manger. Joseph tried his best to do the best he could for Mary and the newborn babe, but he didn't have a lot to work with. But he found some hay over in a corner, and Mary lifted the baby up, and he took the hay, and he made as nice a warm nest as he could for the baby. But the manger belonged to Miss Horse, and nobody had asked Miss Horse if they could use her manger to put a baby in. And they for sure didn't ask her if they could use some of her hay. Well, Miss Horse was quite offended by this and was getting quite hungry, so she began to nibble at the hay. And when nobody was looking, she nibbled a little more. And she nibbled a little more. And she kept nibbling and nibbling until finally baby Jesus was laying on that cold, <laughs> dark, stone manger. And it woke up and started crying. Mary said, Miss Horse, don't do that. He's just a baby. He needs a soft, warm place to sleep. Well, Miss Horse acted like she understood and waited until they put more hay in the manger. And she nibbled and nibbled and nibbled and nibbled again. Until finally, baby Jesus was laying on the, the manger, cold, and it was hard, and he began to cry, like babies would. And Mary said, Miss Horse, all you want to do is eat. From this day forth, all your kith and kin will never get your bellies full. You'll always have your heads down eating. Well, Miss Mule thought that was the funniest thing she'd ever seen. And every time the baby would cry, she would hee-haw, hee-haw and even if the baby wasn't crying. She woke baby Jesus up, I don't know how many times, and Mary said, Miss Mule, don't do that. Shh. He's just a baby. He needs to sleep. Well, Miss Mule will be quiet for a little while, then she think of something funny, and she hee-haw again. <laughs> Till finally, Mary said, Miss Mule, you're not fit to be a parent. A parent would do this to a baby. From now on, all your kith and kin will never be able to have babies of their own. Well, Miss Cow, oh, Miss Cow was so kind and gentle. She lay close to where Mary and Joseph were, hoping that her body heat would help keep them warm. She gave them all the milk that they could possibly drink so they could keep up their strength. They were up and down all night taking care of a newborn baby after all. And she talked to Jack the donkey. You know, Jack had brought Mary so many, many miles to Bethlehem very carefully on his back. And we all know that Jack was blind. Walked all the way from Nazareth to Jeru to Bethlehem. Didn't stumble once. Joseph didn't even know that he was blind when he got him. But he got his sight. You know, that was the first Christmas miracle when Jack the donkey got his sight. And he loved that Miss Cow was telling him about all the things that he didn't know what was. And she would tell him what it was, like the hay and the horse and, and what the manger was and... Oh, they talked about how beautiful that baby was. So when Mary and Joseph had to leave to go to Egypt, they hated leaving Miss Cow, but they had to leave her there at the stable. And she said, Miss Cow, you have been so kind and helpful to us that from now on, all your kith and kin, after you have your lunch in the pasture, you'll lie down in the shade of the trees and you'll be able to continue to chew and enjoy your lunch what farmers today call chewing their cud. <laughs> yeah. So if you'll notice, today a horse, if you see them out in the field, their head is constantly down eating. A mule can't have babies. And cows, if you look after lunch, they're all lying around in the pasture enjoying their cud. That is so good, Judy. Thank you so much. Now, I'm, I'm going to assume that's not one you're going to tell. That's not one we're going to tell. Because we don't want to spoil uh, the uh, annual old Christmas. But, uh, but that is a great story. No. We won't be telling that one this year. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but one similar. Okay. And last year you had a young man that told his first story. His very first yeah. story. He won't be back this year, uh, unfortunately. Um, his father passed away this year. Oh, gosh. Um, he was one of our storytellers last year also. Oh, gosh. Okay. And uh, so I don't think that they'll be back, but we're hoping they'll be, him and his brother and his mom will rejoin us at some point, but he won't be able to join us. Um, and we really will miss Maureen and, and all her yeah. help. 
but um, we've got some fine storytellers and some some nice old stories. Um, a couple of tall tales, a scary story, <laughs> and a couple of really sweet stories. Okay, very good. Judy, thanks so much for being on with me today. This has been so much fun to talk about. And I know everybody's still in the Christmas mood, but most of the Christmas activities that were planned in the community have already happened. So I just wanted to go ahead and take us into January. And, uh, and let's talk about what's coming up then so you can start making your plans. So January the 10th is the fifth annual Old Christmas. The 12th is Appalachian Family Day at the museum, and the 24th is the singing school, which I'm going to go to at least two of those. I don't know that I'll make it to Family Day, but I'll be there at two of them. Uh, and uh, uh, Okoye Story Fest, the 24th Okoye Story Fest, it'll be February the 1st. Okay. So I'm taking you all the way to February. Well, you are. Okay. Judy, thanks so much for being on with well, me today. thank you for having me. Folks, don't go away. I'll be right back with a few things that are still happening in December. I'll let you know about them. And uh, be sure you watch our commercials and support our sponsors because they pay our bills. And I'll be right back.